Super creative. As far back as I can remember, I wanted to be an astronaut. It didn't happen, but it's never too late to reach for the stars. Welcome to Rubservatory, where we embark on adventures in space. The moon and the planet today. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I got a bad feeling about this. Welcome back to Rob Observatory. I'm obviously Rob, and this is the Super Creative Channel. Today, something new: the Skywatcher Quattro 150P a Newtonian reflector telescope, 600 millimeter focal length, 150 millimeter aperture, hence the Quattro F4 name. I thought we'd go ahead and unbox this here together. I'm really excited. I want to tear into this. My mount won't be ready uh, for at least another month and a half. I have a ZWO AM5 coming, but it hasn't even been made yet. So this will just be an unboxing first look video at this brand new telescope from Skywatcher uh, just hit the stores basically this week. So let's get to it. Let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. Uh, my reason for getting this scope is that I wanted a bit more reach. Uh, I shoot with a Red Cat 51 by William Optics and um, you know it's a nice wide field view but I really want something that's going to give me a bit more punch. So with my 183 camera the Red Cat's about uh, 675 millimeter focal length. This guy is going to be closer to 1500. So uh, definitely give me a lot more zoom, a lot more reach into space to get close up on some of these things that I want to shoot. All right. Let's see what we have here. This is my first unboxing video, by the way. I probably won't do a lot of these, so. Paid. So he's good. Um, this bad boy is going to run you about uh, about five six hundred dollars US. I paid six hundred and seventy eight dollars Canadian, and I also did a two hundred dollar deposit. So eight hundred and eighty dollars Canadian. All right, well, there's not a lot going on in here, so let's just get it out of the box so we can show you. And uh, first up, a nicely uh, battered box. Looks like someone played soccer with it in the uh, UPS warehouse before it came to me. All right, yeah, so this is like our adapters, mounting hardware. Um, that looks like a 1.25 inch uh, eyepiece holder. This looks to be, ooh, ultra wide 22 mil eyepiece. And I don't mind doing a bit of visual from time to time, so I might use that on my Maxutoff uh, for doing planetary or lunar observation. So I'll definitely at least test that out. Uh, let's see what we have here. Okay, this is our uh, finder scope. And uh, this goes on top. We will not be using this. I shouldn't have even opened it because uh, I'm going to be using a guide scope for astrophotography. So this Skywatcher 150 Quattro is specifically for astrophotography. You can use it for uh, visual observation, but really when they designed and built it, they had astrophotography in mind. And what is extra exciting about this telescope, I'm sure you just want to see the scope and for me to stop talking, but it's an F4, but it comes with the reducer coma corrector, which takes it down to 518 mil focal length at F3.45. That is the exciting part. All right. Here is the OTA. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of the box. And we'll plunk this guy down right here. So it's actually a little bit smaller than I anticipated. It's fairly well packaged. Of 
course I do it on a glass table, right? And it has some mounting hardware installed, so I actually can't lay it flat at the moment, which is a shame. It's gonna scratch my glass for sure. It says, don't look at the sun. Need hydrogen alpha for that. Yeah, so 600 mil focal length with the coma corrector takes us down to 518. With my 183 camera, 2.7 times crop, something like 1,398 millimeters. Uh, that's going to get me in nice and tight on things like the elephant trunk or maybe the fish head nebula, Malote 15, Orion, the horse head, all of my favorite targets. I'm going to be able to get in nice and close up. Let's go ahead and look at some of the accessories that come with the Skywatcher Quattro 150P. You get a extension from two inch to two inch, uh, I guess for getting back focus with different types of cameras. And then there's a two inch to uh, T2 thread adapter for your camera or other accessories. You have your finder scope, which I probably won't use because I, of course, will be using a guide camera. You also have a mount to attach that finder scope to the OTA. And this one's actually kind of cool. I'll definitely give this a try. This is a wide angle 22 millimeter eyepiece, and it actually seems to be pretty decent quality, um, at least here in my hands. You get some tools for uh, adjusting things. And the star of the accessories show, you get the coma corrector slash reducer. And um, that is something that doesn't usually come with Newtonian reflectors. And it's actually a really big deal with this particular telescope. So for me, one of the main selling features of this telescope is the included coma corrector. Most times with a Newtonian reflector telescope, uh, you have to buy your coma corrector separately. So this is a reducer corrector. It takes it from 600 millimeters down to 518 millimeters, f4 to f3.45. Not a big reduction, but um, it does correct the stars. So coma is basically when the corners of your image look stretched, and this will make sure that your image is corrected in the corners so that you get pinpoint stars uh, all the way to the edges. And this works up to APS-C size sensors. Uh, anything bigger than that, you're gonna get too much vignetting with this telescope. So you wanna go APS-C, you wanna go micro four thirds, even smaller, like my case, uh, the ASI 183, which is a one inch sensor. So the 533, the 183, perfect resolution match for this. My 183 with its tiny 2.4 micron pixels are going to be uh, sitting at about 0.96 arc seconds. So it's absolutely a flawless match resolution wise. My seeing will never be that good. So at least I know I'm not limited by my equipment. And if I do get the odd clear calm night where the seeing is excellent, I'll actually benefit from that from having such a high resolution setup. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the coma corrector. I've never used one of these before. But uh, yeah, essentially it's gonna widen out your field of view just a little bit. It's gonna make the optics just a little bit faster. Because of that, it's focusing the light in on a smaller area so you get a little extra light out of it. If 3.45 f-stops is not fast enough for you on your Newtonian reflector, you can check out the Sterizona Nexus, I believe it's called, and that is an F3 reducer. So uh, it takes you from F4 to F3, and um, that's almost a full stop of light, but I don't think it's enough of an improvement uh, to warrant its price. You're looking at another $550, $600. So uh, basically, uh, you're doubling the cost of your telescope if you did that. But if you don't have one, if you have a different um, quattro and you need a coma corrector, you might want to look at one of those to get a little more bang for your buck out of it. So this uh, coma corrector, basically it just slides right in here. Like so. You tighten it up, you unscrew the lens cap, and on goes your camera. 
I currently image at f4.9. So to go from 4.9 to 3.45 is basically one full stop of light. And if you know how f-stops work, that means that we're actually doubling the amount of light I'll be getting with each exposure with this setup. Doubling the amount of light means I can cut my amount of imaging time in half. That's pretty exciting. So if I pair this telescope with its improved speed on my exposures along with the Antlia 3 nanometer filters which I just finished reviewing and give me a tremendous boost in signal to noise ratio, my images moving forward are going to be, uh, you know, about twice as good because I don't really intend on finishing my image in half the time. I'm going to spend the same amount of time, 20, 30 hours on the image. I'm just going to benefit from having about twice the amount of subs. So I can go from a five minute exposure all the way down to two and a half, three minutes uh, per sub exposure. So that's pretty exciting to be able to make an image uh, either in half the time or twice as good in the same amount of time. Let's talk about some of the upgrades I might do to this telescope. Uh, first up, I think I'm going to add, let's just swing it around here, a second Vixen plate to the top here. And I'm gonna do that basically just so I can add some of my accessories to the scope so it can ride on the mount instead of being connected somewhere else. So I'll put a second Vixen plate, put the ASI Air up here. I will probably use the finder scope mount for my guiding scope. I have the, uh, the 30 F4 um, with the ASI 120. So it's pretty small. Maybe ride that guy up front here ASI Air up top, any other controllers I need. Second upgrade is going to be inside on the secondary mirror. Let's go ahead and pop this guy open. And inside here on the secondary mirror, um, I'm going to install a dew heater. And the reason for that is that it probably will fog up. I'm here in the Pacific Northwest in Vancouver. We do get um, a little bit of humidity and definitely a lot of moisture and condensation, both in the summer and fall and winter. So I'm going to have to add the heater to make sure that the secondary mirror does not fog up on me during a night of imaging. And I mean, that's about it for this telescope. Uh, it comes out of the box. Um, I know Skywatcher is calling this a turnkey solution, and it pretty much is just that. You can connect a camera and get started right away without uh, doing too much to it at all. Uh, I'll also add a EAF by ZWO, the electronic autofocuser, which I'm already using on my Red Cap, but it's not that effective on that scope. So I'm going to transfer it over onto this bad boy here. And uh, this is a 10 to 1 uh, Crayford style focuser, and it seems pretty solid. So I don't think you need to replace that. We'll add an autofocuser, add our 8 position ZWO filter wheel, our ASI 183 camera put it on the AM5 and away we go. Um, we're going to be capturing some pretty nice photons at f3.45. Down on the bottom here we have our Vixen style mounting plate and one of the things I don't like about it, I'll, I'll cut to a close-up, is these little screws and they actually protrude so you can't just sit the telescope down on its plate when you take it off the mount. And I think that's a big design flaw. How hard would it have been to recess those bolts so that this could actually sit flat? Let's open up the, uh, the main tube here and take a look at the inside and maybe talk about what we're gonna do in here. So as you can see, we have these uh, veins that hold the secondary mirror in place and they're gonna create diffraction spikes in our image, but as a kid who grew up in the 80s and 90s, Hubble was the talk of the town and it had diffraction spikes. Sorry, it has, it's still running today, it has diffraction spikes. So I actually equate diffraction spikes with space images. So I've been looking forward to shooting with a scope with diffraction spikes for years for that reason. So I'm super happy about that. If you wanted, you can switch them over for different supports, which kind of change the shape of your diffraction spikes. This particular scope comes um, 
With a very matte black interior, it doesn't look very reflective at all, so I don't think flocking is needed. Some people add uh, like black flocking inside their Newtonians to improve the contrast of their images, but this looks good. And the secondary mirror, the edges of it, are already blacked out. And that means that we don't have to do that upgrade either. Good contrast there. So like Skywatcher says, it's a turnkey solution. I recently watched a live webcast about this telescope. Kevin from Skywatcher USA went live, did a full video about this scope, and it was pretty cool because mine was already on order and it got me really excited. So I'm gonna link to that below. Uh, check out what Kevin has to say. He's gonna be much more eloquent and knowledgeable than I am and, uh, and really give you a good overview of what you could expect from this. Um, but yeah, they call it a turnkey solution, and it pretty much is that. That internal, I'm sorry, included coma corrector, blacked out interior, um, you pretty much have everything you need to go. Uh, just get a collimator. And uh, I know Kevin recommended the Hotec uh, laser crosshair collimator, and that is exactly what I purchased. I took his advice, seems to know what he's talking about. And uh, if it's not the right one, Kevin, I know where you live. So uh, yeah, here's the collimator. Basically just shines a laser down through the eyepiece, hits the secondary mirror into the mirror, and uh, you line it up with the target. So you turn the screws on the back of the telescope to line up the two mirrors. When they're perfect, you're ready to start imaging. So I anticipate having to do that every few imaging sessions to make sure that everything's lined up and that my stars stay nice and sharp. Um, I think it's probably what most people would consider the main drawback with shooting a Newtonian reflector is that you do have to collimate it uh, fairly often to make sure that your optics are maintained and working properly. Uh, I don't mind doing it at all. I think to get uh, an F3.45 aperture focal ratio at around 1500 millimeters with a resolution of 0.96 arc seconds. I mean, at $575, remarkable. So a little bit of collimation here and there, not a problem. And from what I understand, uh, these smaller Newtonians, this is only a six inch, they don't have to be collimated quite as much. So I have my fingers crossed that I will not be doing that too often and to help with that I actually bought a Telegizmos 365 all-weather cover hoping to leave the scope set up up here when the weather's not too bad uh, and cover it between sessions so I don't have to move it bring it up the stairs uh, which could bump things out of alignment and that will keep me from having to collimate it as often so if I can keep it nicely in place not moving it around I'm hoping that I can get um, you know probably uh, each target done without recollimating, you know, give it three, four nights of imaging um, without having to do that kind of maintenance. So yeah, all in all, I'm very excited to get this up and running. Like I said, my mount's not coming for another month and a half, maybe two months. So I'm gonna have to be patient until then. It's the Red Cat, uh, so not so bad. That is going to be our first look of this Skywatcher Quattro 150P. Remember, my friends, the stars belong to everyone. So get out there and see for yourself. This broadcast of Observatory has been brought to you by the Super Creative Corporation. Super creative. Woo!